My name is Caleb Avery. I'm the director of Theater Goes On's online audio production of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. I hope you've enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed putting it together. In this behind-the-scenes featurette, you'll get to hear the cast's thoughts on the show and why it, and the works of Shakespeare in general, are still so important today. Without further delay, let's meet some of the actors. I'm Juno, and I play Puck. Hey, I'm, I'm Joshua Diggins, and I play both Demetrius and Theseus. I'm Annie Bonner, and I play Hippolyta. My name is Isaac Atobi, and I play Aegis and Oberon. I'm Burke Knapp, and I play Lysander. I'm Maddie Farrell, and I play Helena. I'm Jake Wynn, and I play Quince. I'm Harrison Hicks, and I play Bottom. I'm Casey Hanke, and I play Snout. I'm Mitu Vanessa, and I play Titania. You'll also hear from Jen House, who played Hermia, Ethan Hamner, who played Cobweb, and Karen McCormick, who played Moth. What is important to you about Shakespeare? I love Shakespeare because it's challenging. It's so many words, and they're not words that we normally use, and it's not a way we normally talk. I love the challenge of using those words to say something meaningful. I don't know. Shakespeare's writing is just so beautiful and complex and interesting. And I've always been fascinated by his work. Um, he's absolute genius. Just spreading the beautiful art and history that he wrote and characters that we have grown to love. Shakespeare has so many different types of stories that there's truly there's something for almost anyone out there. The text is difficult to get through and takes a long time to be able to understand, but the stories are, um, there's comedies, there's dramas. Some of his writing is silly and some of it is deeply profound. I really love the practice of doing the same text over and over and over again throughout different times of history and different methods and visions and I think that repetition can bring out some really interesting ideas. I love that you can have so many different interpretations, um, many different productions. It's like a staple of our existence, like acting wouldn't exist without the great man William Shakespeare, so it's developed into a lot of productions and inspired many modern dramas since then but it's still very present and relevant to this day. So uh, I, I think it goes back to like, middle school was the first time when I came across Shakespeare. But I think what stuck with me was just, A, it was sort of the history of great literature. And uh, I think to understand anything deeply, you have to not only look back and uh, at how it originated, but also gain a deeper sense of understanding you'll realize that his plays just they delve into all possible human themes and his plays are always multifaceted in the sense it's not just one particular notion that the play is going to be exploring. I feel like it just it gives you a lot more insight on uh, not only what great lit- literature can be but also just human psychology in general. He's able to push um, the what you can do as a writer, what he, he's able to push, how you can use different words and tell a story through um, very poetic means, and it all still flows wonderfully. Uh, even in old English, it, it's 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 beautiful. Gives readers a chance to enhance their imagination, and if they want to write, show them ways and how to become better writers to elevate their writing, if you will. He, as a playwright, really has a grasp on the human condition with like problems of love and loss and like jealousy, envy. All of these things are present in pretty much all of his plays as fantastical as some might be, whether it's like a grounded play like Much Ado About Nothing or something like Midsummer or um, the Scottish play. There's always some sort of element of humanity in there. 
Um, and I think that's something that's really important, really makes his work stand out. You can learn, you know, it's like he's teaching us lessons through his work. So he really kind of uh, knows how to shed light on different circumstances in people's lives and the complexity of uh, the human life. Why should Shakespeare be taught in high school? And how is it relevant to teens and adults today? I was first introduced to Shakespeare in high school, and I had a good experience there. I found out that Shakespeare wasn't boring and that it had a lot of beauty and humor in it. I'm glad I learned Shakespeare in school because I think it's important to practice reading and, and understanding language that doesn't necessarily sound exactly like our common speech. I think it's great practice for like comprehension and also it's beautiful. It's certainly relevant today just because, um, I mean, William Shakespeare explored a lot of exciting themes in his plays. Um, among the most exciting ones for me are um, justice, uh, racial justice, especially um, prejudice, and even like queer relationships. There's like some really cool Shakespeare that kind of plays with that. Um, I think he was, you know, speaking to like universality, which is what made him so successful in his time um, and why we continue to do those plays. It is still relevant today. Romeo and Juliet is very much young love, and that's something a lot of teenagers go through. Um, adults go through uh, having to deal with people who are obstinate or foolish, which are a lot of um, people in Shakespearean plays, such as Oberon in this one. I think that if it was taught in schools, people would be able to easier overcome that obstacle of the text, of the archaic dialogue. I think that more people would like it if they had the tools and the willingness to give it a try. The thing with Shakespeare is a lot of his storytelling is found in a lot of what we watch today. A lot of the TV shows and movies that we watch, they do have those Shakespearean themes. The way that certain screenwriters write, they all seem to take from Shakespeare. And I think that for Shakespeare, if you want to be a writer, you have to know Shakespeare to be able to push you to be even better because that's what he does. He develops his characters. He gives these beautiful tones. Uh, so I think it's very relevant and teenagers should read it because it does enhance your reading comprehension to be able to read something different, still in English, and also outside of your comfort zone in a way. Some kids, including me, might like, we, we got interested in literature after reading Shakespeare. And it's important to teens and adults and, you know, thespians of the like, to not be afraid to not conform to the norm. Not a lot of actors have this sort of mindset, but I'm slowly growing into it. It's okay on stage to be okay with making a fool out of yourself. Like making these weird noises on stage, doing these crazy things you would probably never do in real life. I think his grasp on not just content, but also his grasp on verse and poetry is something that's really impressive to see. Um, and I think it's something that would be very beneficial for people to learn. It teaches dedication to understanding what you're reading. Um, it's a different way of writing, it's a different use of vocabulary. And so it really takes that extra step to understand what is Shakespeare saying? What is happening in this scene? Um, you can't just pretend to read it and then go on your merry way. You have to really dive in, um, kind of take the text apart piece by piece, even take the text apart word by word to understand what is happening, um, what is being meant. And sometimes it can be pretty sassy. And it just teaches, uh kind of a lost way of speaking in this language. Um, it's something that's that's difficult to understand. And as you read it in history, you're, you start to, to recognize how people used to speak, uh, which I think is, is really um, 
it, it's, it's, I think it's important to preserve those things, to pre preserve that kind of language, uh, which is why it's typically done in Shakespearean language. We don't translate it into modern day language. Or if you do, then people don't usually see those <laughs> productions. I think it's fascinating. And I think it's fun for, uh, for teens to discover a variety of works. So I think both modern and old um, content should be, should be explored in high school. I think there is something for everyone in the Bard's writing. Um, and I think anyone can really get something out of it worthwhile. If we don't teach in high school, then we might have generations that just don't know the, the beauty of Shakespeare. What is interesting or important about A Midsummer Night's Dream? I absolutely love this play. I love Midsummer. It's one of my favorite of Shakespeare's. Um, and I think what's really important about it is that kind of um, fantastical, like whimsical element, right? It encourages us to kind of look beyond beyond what's like visible and look beyond what we see and like really see the wonder that's in the world. The comedy and the humor, I think, is some of the wittiest that Shakespeare has. Um, and oh, gee, I think there's so much to like really glean out of this show. Do I think it's like one of Shakespeare's deepest? Not necessarily, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's honestly one of the strengths that it has, that even with all of this kind of supernatural craziness, it's still so upfront and kind of earnest. Midsummer's Night Dream is my favorite Shakespeare play, um, just because of the different character development and you have these different scenes that all interlock together very much like a Valentine's Day or like love actually, all these different characters, stories that they all come together in one way or another, um, but it can stand alone at the same time. What I find fascinating actually is the fairies. I love old stories of um, the fae, the wee folk as they are called in Ireland sometimes. Uh, just these... Um, People who live alongside us in the shadows and they have their own complicated political systems and they have their own jealousies and rivalries and they often catch mortals as um, unfortunate pawns or uh, uh, casualties of their squabbles and fights. They uh, are very emotional creatures. They are quixotic. They are... Um, uh, quick to shift from one thing to another and they often will play pranks on each other that go too far and they're very petty and they want revenge and they're very appearance oriented and I just think that they're so fun and that Midsummer Night's Dream is a great example of two powerful figures Oberon and Titania who are just in this silly fight over something very minor and these four people's entire lives are altered because of their stupid little fight uh, i would say definitely the comedy stands out the most and what's actually going on in the story and the switching and the the um you know the the love stories it's it's all interesting and in how certain things play out towards the end and uh the monologues are really really nice i love them they're so beautiful but that's in every shakespeare piece though i think it's <laughs> i think it's very funny that the the whole premise of the show is just uh, this this character kind of messing with with these these two people and and just making a mess of everything, like messing up uh, their intention. They're like, okay, we'll get these this one together with this person and this one with this person, uh, but then just screws it up so royally that you have this terrible mess that is just just barely fixed. I think that is such an interesting premise. You have Lysander. Uh, like just throwing Hermia under the bus in, entirely at one point, making a mockery of her. And at the end, they still end up together. It's, it's, I think that's just very, very funny. How ridiculous it is. A man's head gets changed into a donkey. In what other play are you going to see that? <laughs> it's just so playful and joyful. And um, Puck especially is... Um, just such an embodiment of 
like the spirit of mischief and play and um he certainly causes some trouble but um all is set aright and i, I like that there's a play within the play it makes it meta it kind of seems like shakespeare poking fun at himself there is a lot that has to be unraveled it's not a single face plot i mean it's just this really fascinating story of like magical life um, intersecting and impacting uh, our regular, normal human lives. And almost like there's a power of, uh, you know, these magical creatures over, you know, human interaction and, and uh, human love. I mean, Shakespeare always talked about um, love in, in a variety of ways. And uh, I think this is just kind of a fun way to look at love, uh, it's this really interesting exploration. And it, there's just something so fun about it. I mean, fairies are always cool. <laughs> are there any other favorite Shakespeare plays you would recommend to audiences? I know that my personal favorite Shakespeare play of all time is um, Macbeth, the Scottish play. Um, it's a play that is very near and dear to my heart. That being said, it can be very heavy. The Merchant of Venice has to be one. Definitely the Scottish play Macbeth and The Tempest and Hamlet. Oh, well, I love Macbeth. Of course, Romeo and Juliet, uh, because, you know, it's always lovely to read about people falling in love and uh, there's something, you know, there's something tragic about both of them. <laughs> I really enjoy Othello. Um, just the the action and the romance and the revenge that takes place in Othello is just really powerful. There's a really well-made movie version. Um, I can't remember who's in it, but it it's really well done. And if you're a first-time Shakespeare watcher, um, I highly recommend watching that movie version to kind of set the stage for you. The Merry Wives of Windsor. It's a comedy. I think that it's pretty underrated, and I think that when done right, it can be absolutely hysterical. It features Falstaff, and um, he's an idiot, and it's a really good one um, because it has women as the main characters, and they are the smart ones, and there's a lot of bumbling men who are trying their best in some cases and not in others, and they really give them what for. And it's it's just very funny. I think I would recommend Much Ado About Nothing. Much Ado About Nothing. Much Ado About Nothing. 100%. I, I read that when well, it was like very early, like freshman in high school in my theater class. Um, it was it was a pretty fun read. And I my mind still goes back to that just because of some of the memorable moments in the play. Uh, it's it's quite funny. It's it was one that I when I did it in high school, I I didn't understand it at all when we were first reading the script. But as we started uh, rehearsing and, and doing the, the show, I started to realize how funny it actually was. And then I actually saw, I think, the Denzel Washington production in an English class. And I was like, oh, yeah, this just brings it to life. So definitely I would suggest that version specifically because it really just feels real. It feels like the characters are real and it brings the comedy out really well. I love the contrast between young love and older, more seasoned love. I love the hijinks and the craziness interspersed with some moments of real real raw feeling and i love the happy ending julius caesar <laughs> and um hamlet definitely those are my two favorites julius caesar i love so much um i remember reading it in my sophomore year of high school and when we were in class doing it i was actually you know, ta well, not so much task, but when I was asked to read, um, I would read for Caesar and Brutus and Cassius and his whole story of you know, the whole story of betrayal, like true betrayal really stemmed from that quite a bit. Um, and Hamlet, you can see that if you watch The Lion King or if you've even seen uh, Robert Eggers, The Northman, which came out earlier this year, that takes very much from Hamlet. Um, more betrayal, more tragedy, and fallen son pretty much going to avenge his father. 
Um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful story, a story of growing. Um, Julius Caesar is like a story of, um, knowing who your friends are and, uh, like Hamlet, just being able to stand for what's right and claim what's yours. Oh gosh. Okay. What Shakespeare would I recommend to others? Um, I mean, if Shakespeare's happening near you, like go see it. Um, you know, it's it's important to just get people in seats for live theater, I think. Um, but my favorites to watch, uh, my favorite is still Romeo and Juliet. And I know that sounds annoying and cliche, but it's my favorite. Um, and I'll always see Hamlet when it's, when it's available to me. Um, I know those are like obvious classics that we all read in school, but you know, I've read most of them and um, those two still still really stick with me. I think they're popular for a reason. Some of our cast members were entirely new to Shakespeare. Let's hear what they have to say about participating in this production. Yeah, being new to Shakespeare, um, I've enjoyed um, kind of the fun spirit of these characters in the show. I would definitely like to do more. Um, I think it's a very... It's kind of the roots of modern theater in a way. Every everyone in the theater world knows Shakespeare. Um, I really enjoyed how over the top Bottom is. He's a very fun character. He gets to play a character within the play, so there's a fun meta layer there. So Bottom is already pretty over the top, and then Pyramus is way over the top, which is very fun to play. What personal experiences do you have, if any, related to the beauty and art of Shakespeare? I don't know that I have one personal experience with Shakespeare that stands out to me, but I was fortunate enough to be cast in my first Shakespeare um, production. It was Romeo and Juliet. Um, And my director uh, is a wonderful woman, my director at the time, Christiane Jacobson. Uh, she uh, just completely opened my eyes to Shakespeare. I was always kind of like, you know, he's cool, whatever, but it's kind of weird and the text isn't worth it and whatever. But this was just a fantastic production. I got to play Count Paris um, and she had music and dancing where it was appropriate and she nailed the comedy of it and the, the pain and the passion of certain scenes. It's and it just completely opened my eyes to the entire world of Shakespeare. And I went on to do a few other productions of his. And I'm just very grateful to her for opening my eyes to it. And my life is richer for having experienced Shakespeare. Oh, the first time that I was so deeply in love with a Shakespeare production was Midsummer in college. I played Hermia. Um, I really, really, really loved that experience. It was so sweet. Um, And in general, the dialogue in this play in particular is so exciting. And the physicality, the potential for beautiful physicality, obviously not in a reading, but of this play is uh, is just really inspiring. It's, I don't know, to me, the story is about how, I I guess it, it, shines a light on that that things can't really be undone (laughs) in this story they get to be undone because it's magic um but not all that's done can be undone i think that's an important takeaway and i also think um just like remembering that you know time moves quickly and there's not much of it and a lot can happen in the night and it can all be different by the next day you know things Things change rapidly, um, not to hold on to anything too tightly. If you could describe the work, style, and art of Shakespeare in one word, what would it be and why? Energetic. Timeless. Fun. Shakespearean. I would say profitable. Weird. (laughs) <laughs> that that's all I could say. Weird. Weird good, not weird bad. Life is just utterly brilliant when you actually read his work 
back then, the, you know, everything was more complex. It makes you think, you know, I think it expands your, your mind. Intriguing. There's always something that is to be unraveled when reading a Shakespeare play. And you can find out themes or, or Easter eggs, something that might not have been discovered earlier. Wit. He uses comedy in such a way that makes you think as well. And, uh, you, you know, you think of like Mercutio and Romeo and Juliet, and he's sitting here dying, telling them, you find me tomorrow and you'll see a grave man. Complex. The, the meticulous nature of the wording, how he crafts scenes and relationships together. Everything means something. Everything is important. Every word is important. Revolutionary. He really, he took this idea and just ran with it and really grew the history and the art and the culture and writing and language and literacy that we have today. And um, I think we have a lot of what we have today. We have to thank Shakespeare for it. Masterful. I just don't think it can be replicated. The way English was spoken, there was more of an eloquence to it. The way you listen to uh, the words that are said or the words that are being used and how they're being used, oh, you're it definitely catches your attention. I know it catches mine because you're like, man, how do you, how do you put these, how do you put these words together the way that you do? And yet it all still makes sense. It doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like mumbo jumbo. It just sounds like legitimate, beautiful poetry. And there are a lot of great writers today. There are a lot of great poets today. But I still say there's just something about that old English that I love and I don't think anybody will be able to touch or replicate ever again in history. So um, thank you, Shakespeare. Humanity, for me, is the main kind of pull and draw of Shakespeare. There's a reason that we're still doing Shakespeare plays like hundreds of years after they've been written. Um, and I think because they still speak to us timeless i think that all of his stories are just about people uh people who are having emotions and having silly little life events uh those are a lot of his plays other ones are about war but um you know war love comedy these are all big things that are just they're never not going to be relevant Thanks so much for listening. This interview featurette was directed, edited, and conducted by Caleb Avery. It is protected under the copyright law of the United States and other countries. Unauthorized use, distribution, or sale of any part of it is not permitted. Look for more from Theater Goes On, coming soon. The sound effects are courtesy of Pixabay.